Hi, welcome to FlexiWan. In this video, I'm going to introduce the newest FlexiWan feature, Security Firewall. We'll begin with a quick introduction and then move on to the demonstration. Starting with version 4.2, a firewall functionality is included with FlexiWan. This feature is built with SD-WAN and SASE concepts in mind, so it can be deployed on a mass scale with ease in just a few clicks. FlexiWan Firewall offers an easy and intuitive way to filter certain or all traffic per several different criteria, including application identifications, while providing the enterprise WAN filtering capability as well as port forwarding and one-to-one -one NAT. Firewall provides the following features. Allow or deny traffic through the use of firewall rules. Firewall features inbound and outbound rules. Policies are used to configure and deploy firewall rules on a mass scale. Firewall can use traffic and app identifications, whether predefined or your own app IDs using the traffic tags. Also, firewall features port forwarding and one-to-one -one NAT, as well as edge access, which allows filtering access to FlexiEdge services such as SSH, FlexiEdge UI, and so on. Lastly, firewall is stateless and ACL based. So let's dive in. What you'll first notice is that FlexiManage sidebar is now featuring several new sections, traffic optimization and security. We've also renamed the old application identifications to traffic and app identifications, since now the firewall functionality can also use app identifications. The traffic optimization section now has the path selection, our application-based routing feature, which also relies on traffic and app identifications. And finally, the security section shows the firewall rules and policies. Through the use of firewall policies, a user can define a set of rules and then deploy on many FlexiEdge devices at once. So let's focus now on firewall rules itself, which can be accessed from device settings. Simply open any device settings and the first thing you'll notice is the firewall tab. Click on it to see all firewall rules. Here, one can see all the firewall rules in place, whether inbound or outbound. Another thing you'll notice is that device-specific rules is disabled. Each FlexiEdge device can have device-specific rules installed through this page. However, it can also have firewall policy or both installed. The policy is intended for firewall rules deployment on a global scale. For example, making sure all sites follow the company policies for allowed or blocked websites, allowing access to specific resources, or so on. For now, let's go through creating device-specific rules. As you can see, outbound or inbound rules can be added. By default, PlexiWan blocks all inbound traffic while outbound traffic is allowed. So let's start with outbound. Outbound rules apply to all outgoing traffic, traffic starting from LAN towards WAN. Click on a plus sign to add a new rule. This type of rule can be used to allow or deny outgoing traffic to a specific IP or range. It can also use traffic and app identifications as a destination or source, which allows filtering using predefined app identification categories or defining your own. We'll talk about using app IDs shortly. Now let's do a basic rule blocking access to a specific IP. This part is pretty straightforward. Under destination, add IP you wish to block. In this example, we'll use quad9 IP. Not that you should block quad9 DNS, but this is just an example. So add the IP with the mask. Pick protocols, from which we offer ICMP, TCP, or UDP, or select all. Note that if ICMP option is selected, the port range disappears. Okay, so moving forward, let's keep any set on source, but select LAN under interfaces. Finally, for action, pick deny. Notice that the rule is grayed out. This is because we did not turn on device specific rules. Now in order to apply this rule, we simply have to click update device. That's it, in a few moments the job will sync and LAN clients won't be able to access Quad9 DNS. That's how easy it is to block an IP. So let's add another rule, but this time let's cover traffic and app identifications. Let's first cover traffic name, which can be available for both source and destination. Traffic name applies to application identifications such as Facebook IP ranges or ports used by services and applications such as BGP, SMB, etc. Simply click here to see the drop down and list of available services and applications. 
In the same way, one can pick a custom app identifications holding particular IPs or IP ranges and their ports. However, to do that, they first need to be added via traffic and app identifications sections. For now, let's focus on blocking access to a specific service, in this case Facebook. Simply start typing the identification name and then select it. Pick the LAN interface, keep the source as any if you want to block the whole LAN from accessing Facebook and finally set the action to deny. That's it. Let's do another rule, this time using traffic tags. Traffic tags are the categories of each app identifications. I'll switch to app identifications page for a moment to show this. Each app identification can have a category, service class and importance. We provide built-in application identifications which can be viewed on this page. Each app ID can also be edited. Users can also add their own app identifications which then can be used for firewall rules or with path selection. Path selection is our application-based routing feature. Here you can see two app identifications, company ranges and egress ports. Company ranges app ID contains all company IPs. This can be used for firewall rules to allow or deny traffic from or towards this range. Another example is the egress filtering. Egress filtering contains ports that are commonly used and we can use this for egress filtering. I'll show this example in a bit. So moving back to firewall rules, selecting traffic tags offers to filter traffic per any of these categories. For example, you may want to allow or deny traffic to proxies or VPNs. However, you can also use importance, which can, for example, reject traffic marked to be of low importance. So let's add the rule preventing LAN network from accessing VPN services. Simply follow these steps and that's it. Now let's cover one more example for outbound traffic, egress filtering. This type is a more hardened network approach commonly used for limiting outgoing traffic and only allowing specific ports or ranges. It relies on app identifications we have created previously and then adding firewall rules to enforce egress filtering. First, let's add a rule denying all traffic. Simply pick any for destination and source, select interface and pick deny for action. Now add the rule. This rule will block all traffic on LAN. Next, we add a rule that is allowing all traffic but only using a specific ports. This is the important part. As you can see, egress filtering rule is at the bottom of the outbound rules table. This means that the rule blocking all traffic has a higher priority, therefore it will not do what we are trying to achieve. To change priority, simply drag the egress ports rule. That's it. The way priority works is that the top rules have higher priorities than the bottom ones. Priority can be changed by dragging. Click update device and the site will have egress filtering in place. That covers the outbound rules. So let's cover the inbound rules. The rule concept is the same. However, with the inbound rules, incoming traffic can be allowed. By default, all incoming traffic is blocked, which also includes SSH. So if you upgraded FlexiWAN to this version and SSH is not working for you, this is why. So let's use that as a first example. We will add a rule which allows port 22 to the firewall, enabling SSH access. Simply click on the plus sign in the inbound section and let's get started with configuration. By default, this FlexiEdge access type is selected. This means that the rule we create will apply to traffic arriving to the WAN. WAN is selected by default, so let's just add SSA. As you can see, you can search for a particular service and select TCP as a protocol. For source, we'll keep any, but we suggest limiting access for only specific IPs. You can also use company ranges traffic tag, for example, so this rule will limit SSH access only to company ranges. Add the rule and that's it. After updating the device, SSH access should work. Let's go back to inbound rules to cover two more types, port forwarding and one-to-one -one NAT. With port forwarding, users can define access to internal resources using external WAN IP. So in our example, traffic will be port forwarded from WAN to the internal device.
just add the rule, update device, and that's it. And finally, let's cover one-to-one -one NAT. With it, we can map external IP to the internal resource and forward all traffic to it. This is done in a similar way. Select NAT one-to-one -one NAT as a type, pick WAN interface and add internal IP. That's it. Don't forget to update the device to actually apply changes. Last to cover are rule actions. Each rule can be disabled, edited, or you can create new rules above or below it. One can also duplicate rule for easier rule creation. Now that we've covered firewall rules, let's cover firewall policies. Firewall policies is the place where users can define a set of rules and then install it to many devices at once. Policy can be created from this section by clicking on the new firewall policy. You'll notice that the layout is similar to the firewall tab, and everything is pretty much the same. However, there is a major difference. Port forwarding and one-to-one -one NAT is not available to be used with firewall policies. This is by design, because configuring these types requires specifying the WAN IPs, which are different for each side. Instead, port forwarding and one-to-one -one NAT can be added via device-specific rules. However, each FlexiEdge site can have a policy installed as well as device-specific rules, such as port forwarding and one-to-one -one NAT. Also, rules defined in policies are considered global rules. It is of course supported and recommended to use policies and device-specific rules together. That being said, there's still plenty of good reasons to use policies, where the main reason is a predefined rule set which can be deployed to multiple sites at once. This drastically reduces the time required for configuring and deploying firewall rules. For this example, we will configure a default policy for all sites. It will include rules to allow SSH and FlexiEdge UI access to the edge itself and rules to filter contents. First, we'll add access to the local FlexiEdge UI and SSH. For security reasons, we always recommend limiting access to these two services to only specific IP ranges. Next, we'll add a few outbound rules that reject access to social media, proxies and peer-to-peer -peer services. Once ready, add the policy name and save the policy. Now it's time to install the policy to one or more devices. To install the policy, navigate to the devices page and then select the devices you wish to install policy on. After selecting the desired devices, click on the actions button and click on the install policy. Finally, from the drop down menu, select the policy you wish installed, in our case, FlexiWan. After a few moments, the policy install job will complete and we, will, we can open the firewall tab of the device and see the policy rules. Notice that the global rules can't be edited. This can only be done through the policy itself. And yes, any changes to the policy will automatically be synced to all the devices that have this policy installed. For our last example, we'll show you how to block users on Wi-Fi from accessing LAN. To do that, add the new outbound rule. Add the LAN segment and for action select Deny, pick the Wi-Fi interface and select the protocols. So in this example we've demonstrated having both device specific rules and the global rules on the same device. So that's it for our firewall introduction, hope you enjoyed the video, feel free to contact us for more information, thank you.